Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering and today I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration of optical simulation using ANSYS SPIOS. So I have SPIOS open. You can start it with uh, by typing in, finding the ANSYS SPIOS. This is a 2019 R2. And uh, we'll start by dragging some model and this is, you can see this is built into the ANSYS space claim work um, user environment. So we can import any type of geometry. Space claim can br allow you to bring in almost anything and then uh, set various, uh, make any changes to it. So this is uh, just some basic examples of geometry. Let's, uh, let's create a light source. So I'm going to do a little sketch here. Um, maybe I'll move the light source over here. So I just need a surface to create, to uh, emit some light from. And then we have three different objects. And these objects can be uh, set to be any material. So after you have a geometry set up, we can go into the light simulation part of it. Uh, basically what we need to do is we need to assign optical properties to the objects we want to simulate. We have a wide range of sources, interactive surface, ray file, luminaire, various types of ambient sources. We have various types of sensors, irradiance, 3D, um, radiance, human eye, even camera LiDAR sensors. And over here we have different types of simulation we can do. Uh, direct simulation traces uh, the rays from the source to your sensor and reverse does the opposite. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Uh, first we want to start creating materials. Uh, you can click on one of the parts here and uh, assign some material properties. So this one right now is assigned to be a mirror with a that's opaque and 100% reflective. So I'm going to maybe set this to 85% reflective. Let's go ahead and set another material. Let's try that again. Now this material we can have it to be a uh, mirror and we'll uh, instead of mirror we have the option of setting using a library so with spios we have the option of uh, downloading a wide range of uh, material properties so there's a there's a full library available on the spios website if we look at surfaces you can see there's a huge array, array of different types of surface properties. We can look at materials, which is, shows us the volumetric properties. We even have sources, which uh, includes various LEDs and light bulbs, lenses, cameras, etc. So we have some basic uh, sor sor uh, libraries available I've downloaded to my computer. So if we look into one of these, let's look at this one here. Uh, there's a wide range of surfaces of different colors we can pick and we can take a look at this one that shows you the colors. So let's say that particular thing, that surface is fairly green so we want maybe 223. Uh, and go back into Spios here and um, Go into Spios, my library, different types of surfaces, and we want to go to 220, number 3. And that assigns that material to that particular surface, and then we can maybe assign a different material to this surface. Alright, so this one. Um, We'll use the library as well. Maybe we'll use the first one here. So in addition to those surfaces, uh, you can, we can also define surfaces. So you can, for example, define a BSDF surface, simple scatter surface, advanced scattering surface. And SPOs also can provide the hardware you need to measure data. So you can scan a opaque surface and get simple scatter surface information from it directly. 
So we have material set up. Let's uh, set a source onto our little light bulb over here. All right. This is uh, by default a Lambertian source. We're going to change this to maybe 100 degrees. You can see we can change it. We can also make it a uh, symmetric Gaussian, asymmetric Gaussian, or a library where you can import the actual source of a object. Um, source of a measured source from a, a light bulb or something. So lastly that we can maybe track the irradiance. So I'm going to um, move this ir irradiance. Okay, so in space claim we can just drag things around or we can put in an exact position. So maybe I'll put the irradiance back here and uh, maybe have a uh, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's my ir ir irradiance. So we have uh, the material properties, the source and sensor, so now we can do a direct ray tracing. So we want to include all of our bodies here. Right, so it's adding three bodies in the simulation. We're going to add this sensor and this irradiance. Oh, I added another one. One is enough for now. Let's hit the compute button. Oh, I have to save it. Before we can go solve it, we got to save it. Uh, So it looks like that one of my solids, maybe I should have named these things a little bit better. Uh, maybe calling them all solids wasn't a great idea, but let's take a double check this. So that's that material, that's that material, and that's this material. So all the materials are assigned. Um, oh, I probably need to select this one too, so let's, uh, let's add this. Okay, that's been added. Let's see if this works now. Okay, so that's our iridience result, so we you're shooting some rays into the scene and the light is bouncing off and showing us what the what the reflect light is. If we look at direct settings here we have the option of including uh, more rays. Okay, so when we include more rays you can see the resulting radiance diagram gets more refined and uh, we have the other option of turning on light, light expert. So this allows the track to see where the light came from. And to do this, we also need to enable this for the sensor itself. Okay. So if you look at the Iridius plot here and start selecting specific areas. we can see where the light of that so for example there's a hot spot right here so maybe it's helpful for us to know where the light is coming from in that hot spot right so you can see that this hot spot is generated by light hitting my mirror bouncing and hitting the surface so it tells you uh, what about this hot spot over here no. Let's uh, move the part over here and really zoom into this area. <clears throat> so again, this is uh, the light hitting the the mirror reflected surface of this curve, and then uh, reflecting and focusing on that particular hotspot. So you can quickly track to see where your light is going. So now let's stop this. Um,
we'll stop that tracing and let's move the we'll make this into a transparent material and have the light shoot out of here so we're gonna move this uh, we can move it to uh, particular positions All right. and uh, maybe we'll rot this, rotate this uh, 180 degrees All right, so now we're shooting the light into this part and we can adjust our material so instead of using an 85 percent mirror material we can say this will be opti optically polished and uh, we can use a library of different optics or we can specify a property so what I can do here is go and browse my Spios library. Um, I think it's actually here. Some the basic materials, and we'll make this our a polycarbonate lens. Okay, so very quickly changing that from a opaque material to a lens, we move the ray source, and let's run this again. Okay. So this tells us what happens when we have a opaque, um, that's now a transparent lens. You can see the, and we can do the same thing as before. So we can see, track some of the light as it moves around. So let's see where these, uh, this highest red area is coming from. So showing you the reflection of uh, the light, internal reflection through this odd looking lens and then we have a shadow here obviously from our uh, cylinder etc. So this is a quick example of direct ray tracing. don't want to make this too long but hopefully you enjoyed it and those help you to get started. We have a variety of other options so over the next uh, few weeks I'll certainly be investigating some of these. Uh, we'll do a, a inverse one, uh, Look, maybe look at some human eye and uh, camera and lidar model. If you found this video to be helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at singularityeng.com. Thank you and have a great day.